to surrender into, to, into a radical letting go is a kind of death which allows us to wake up. But also to surrender back into life and back into human, your humanness is also a kind of death. It's a kind of surrender. And it brings with it a kind of redeeming quality. There's a sense of being restored to your natural condition, not because you've left your humanity, but because spirit has completely embraced it. This is the gift, I think, of the whole story. This is what sets it, this is where its uniqueness as a spiritual and religious story really shines where it is the descent of spirit into the world of time and space. Whereas other stories are the awakening of spirit from time to the eternal. This is the eternal descending into time. The two different kind of spiritual movements, which doesn't mean they can't occur at the same time. They actually can. Strangely as it may seem. But there are two different qualities. And when you wake up, it tends to take you into emptiness. Yes, it's, a, it's extremely full emptiness, but it's an emptiness none, nonetheless, the emptiness of pure consciousness. When you experience a kind of redemption that this story is talking about, it's a kind of awakening, but it's, as I said, it is the eternal awakening in form. in your humanity. And so I'm sure this theme will play out more as the week goes on. Actually, I'm sure you can see in some way that this, these themes play out within every human being's life in either great or small ways. The story is giving voice to our divinity. And finding the divinity not just outside of humanity in the great unborn space of, of emptiness, but finding the divinity right in the world of form uh, and through a complete embrace of life as it, as it actually is. Does that make sense? So to do this, you're embracing everything that it is to exist, which is the difficulty of it too, which is the triumph and the tragedy of it. It is, to, it is not a movement of, of seeking to avoid it. It's not a transcendent movement necessarily strange thing is when you completely and absolutely embrace it with sort of an, an immense cosmic yes, strangely you're not, um, you experience life with a kind of buoyancy and joy and peacefulness that is generally unknown. It's, it's, a, it's a way of finding freedom and, and liberation both beyond life in the realm, in the timeless realm, and also in, in life, in the midst of birth, sickness, old age, and death, as the Buddhists would say. So it's an embrace of everything. Radical, radical, radical embrace. It's a yes. That's a leap of faith. And that's what the story is trying to convey. And that leap of faith brings the experience of redemption. Everything suddenly seems to be complete. Not be complete because you've left it behind, because you've discovered the completeness within it. 
you def- you've discovered the grace within the chaos. And it seems that something within us reaches out for both of these kind of graces, the transcendent grace and the grace within the human existence. Both of these are, are, are yearned for within the depths of our being. Both of them are something that in the deepest place we long for. And both of them take a kind of courage and both of them take a kind of faith a stepping outside of our own imagination. And to open to something larger than anything you know. Whether you want to call that the self, whether you want to call it Buddha nature, whether you want to call it God, it doesn't much matter, but something larger than just your own personal resource. That's what faith is.